Okay, so this is practice set number 16, and we're going to look at some sample problems for our lesson on the order of operations. So before we jump in and start doing problems, let's just remember that the order of operations tells us which operation to perform in which order when you're faced with a problem that has multiple operations. Okay, and then we talked about the order of operations. We said that the highest priority or step number one, we'll just put first here, would be to work inside of any grouping symbols, right, such as parentheses or absolute value bars or the curly brackets or whatever they may be. So I'm just going to list this as, I'm just going to put parentheses here. Okay, so that's how it's commonly taught. Parentheses. Okay. The second thing you want to do is you want to work through any exponents you have. Right, so apply any exponents you might have. So I'm just going to put exponents. Okay, third, you want to multiply or divide, and this is working from the left of the problem to the right of the problem. So multiplication and division have the same priority level. Okay, you just do them based on which occurs to the left of the other. Right, so if division is to the left of multiplication, it's the highest priority. If multiplication is to the left of division, multiplication is the highest priority. Okay, so I'm just going to put multiply or divide and put from left to right. Okay. And then fourth, for the final step, the lowest priority is to add or subtract, and again, this is the same, from left to right. Okay, so if you see subtraction to the left of addition, you subtract first. If you see addition to the left of subtraction, you add first. Okay. Now, a common thing that you're going to see to allow yourself to remember this would be please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Okay, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. So the first thing you do when you get to a problem, and we're getting a problem one in a second, I just want to kind of recap what we did in the lesson, is to write out P-E-M-D-A-S. So that's the first letter for each word in that little sentence that I read. Right, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, okay? For right now, we have our order of operations on the screen, so we don't need to use that. When we get to problem two, we will use it, and I'll show you how to use it. All right, so for the first problem here, the objective is to evaluate. And we have five that's being multiplied by, and then we have some parentheses here, and inside the parentheses, we have eight times, and then we have inside of brackets, two plus, and then inside of parentheses here, three minus six, Okay, and then outside here we have minus 4 squared. Okay, minus 4 squared. So, how do we start this? Well, our highest priority is to work inside of any grouping symbols that you have. Well, here, in this problem, we have multiple grouping symbols, right? We have grouping symbols here, and then we have grouping symbols here, and then, again, we have grouping symbols right here. Okay, so the rule is you always want to start at the innermost set and work your way outward. Okay, so the innermost set would be here, where you have 3 minus 6. And the reason for that is, once you get inside of a set of parentheses or grouping symbols, you need to reapply the order of operations. So you would start back at parentheses, right? So if you get inside of right here, what are you going to do? You're going to reapply the order of operations, and that will tell you to start inside of here. Okay, and then you reapply the order of operations, and that tells you to start inside of here. Okay, so that's how you end up, again, starting at the innermost set and working outward. So let's figure out what the value is for 3 minus 6. Okay, 3 minus 6 is negative 3. Okay, so 3 minus 6 is negative 3. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to replace that quantity, 3 minus 6, with just a negative 3. So this will be 5, and then times, we have the parentheses here, 8, open up our brackets, and we'll have 2 plus 
And then instead of having the quantity 3 minus 6, I'm going to put negative 3. And then minus 4 squared. Okay. So now we want to do 2 plus negative 3. 2 plus negative 3. Well, 2 plus negative 3 is going to give us negative 1. And so we're just going to replace 2 plus negative 3 with a negative 1. So we'll have 5 times this quantity here. We're going to put 8 times negative 1 and then minus 4 squared, close parentheses. Okay. So now we're inside of these main parentheses here. And I don't have any parentheses inside of there anymore. I mean, I have the parentheses here that are around negative 1, but that's just to make it clear that it's a negative 1. So the next highest priority is to, what's the second thing here? It's exponents, right? That's the next highest priority. Okay, first we do grouping symbols, then we do exponents. So I have an exponent here, and so I'm going to figure out what the value of 4 squared is next. That's my next highest priority. So 4 squared is 4 times 4, that's 16. So then this becomes 5 times this quantity, and inside this, the parentheses here, we have negative 1 or 8 times negative 1, I'm sorry. 8 times negative 1, and then minus, we said 4 squared was 16. Okay, close parentheses. Okay, so this becomes 5 times the quantity, 8 times negative 1 minus 16. Okay, 8 times negative 1 minus 16. And in case you don't realize why I'm saying the quantity, whenever you have parentheses and something inside, you could say, let's add parentheses around 2 plus 3. I could say the quantity 2 plus 3. Right, it's that quantity. All right, so moving on. The next highest priority now inside of the parentheses would be multiplication. Right, you have multiplication there and you have subtraction here. Okay, multiplication is the higher priority. Okay, again, multiplication occurs as the third step. Multiply or divide from left to right. So 8 times negative 1 would be negative 8. So 8 times negative 1, use the wrong pen there is negative 8, so we'll have 5 times the quantity, negative 8 minus 16. Okay. Now staying inside of the parentheses, now we have one operation, it's just subtraction, so that's easy to do, right? We do negative 8 minus 16, that's going to give us negative 24, and so we end up with 5 times negative 24, and again we just have one operation here, so we multiply 5 times negative 24, well we know that answer is going to be negative, and then what's 5 times 24? Well, you do 5 times 20, that's 100. And then you do 5 times 4, that's 20. And then you just add those two together, right? So 100 plus 20 is 120. And now remember this was negative. And so our final answer for this problem is negative 120. Okay, let's move on to problem number 2. Okay, for problem 2, the objective is to evaluate. And here we have these brackets around 9 squared minus the quantity 3 cubed minus 4 squared. And this is divided by, and inside of brackets, we have 6 squared minus the absolute value of negative 64 divided by 2 to the 6th power. Okay. So here's where it's going to come in handy. And I'll have the order of operations written up there, so you might have forgotten them. But if you remember, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, I know it sounds completely ridiculous, but if you just remember that, you won't forget your order of operations. Okay, so please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Okay, the P stands for parentheses, and you just know that to be grouping symbols. The E stands for exponents. The M and the D would be multiply or divide from left to right. And then the A and the S would be add or subtract from left to right. Okay. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Just remember that. All right, so let's start out again. We always want to do what's inside of parentheses first. And in this situation, we have what? We have grouping symbols on the left, and we have grouping symbols on the right. So does it matter which, which side we start with? Well, no, it doesn't. All right, we're just going to start on the left here. And I see inside of the grouping symbols here that I have more grouping symbols. 
So I want to always start with the innermost set of parentheses. So I'm going to start inside of right here. And we're going to do 3 cubed minus 4 squared first. Okay, so how do we break this down? Well, I know that I have a subtraction operation here, but I also have an exponent here and here. Exponents are the highest priority, so we find out the value of 3 cubed and 4 squared first. 3 cubed is 3 times 3, which is 9, times 3 again, which is 27. 4 squared is 4 times 4, that's 16. So this is going to become, we'll have our brackets, and then 9 squared minus the quantity, 3 cubed is 27, minus 4 squared, which is 16. Okay, so 9 squared minus the quantity, 27 minus 16. Okay, this is going to be divided by, and then this whole thing's not going to change. Okay, okay staying on the left side here, the next thing I want to do, my next highest priority, again, is to work inside of the parentheses here. Okay, so we do 27 minus 16, and that's going to give us 11. Right, so we'll have 9 squared inside of our brackets minus 11. Right, this result is 11. We close the bracket, divide it by, and again, this whole thing right here doesn't change. So we'll have, open the brackets, 6 squared minus absolute value of negative 64 divided by 2 to the 6th power. All right, so... Continuing, now inside of here, what do we got? We got 9 squared minus 11. So I got subtraction and I have an exponent. Well, I want to do my exponent first, right? That's the highest priority. So 9 squared would be 9 times 9, that's 81. Then minus 11. Next, we want to do 81 minus 11, and you can kind of do that, you know, vertical subtraction in your head. 1 minus 1 would be 0, and then 8 minus 1 would be 7, so this would be 70. Okay, so now we just need to work on this. So what are we dealing with with this? Let me just write it out again. Well, we have brackets here, and we have absolute value bars here. Now, absolute value bars are going to be treated like grouping symbols, okay? And that's important to know because you're going to run across that when you get to algebra. So, again, we start inside of the main brackets, and we say, okay, I want to reapply my order of operations, and so that leads us to... Again, look for another set of grouping symbols to start in. And so we start inside of the absolute value operation. Okay? And inside here we have negative 64 divided by 2 to the 6th power. So I have division and I have an exponent. The exponent is more important here, right? It has a higher priority. 2 to the 6th power is what? That's 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So 2 times 2 is 4, 4 times 2 is 8, 8 times 2 is 16, 16 times 2 is 32, and then 32 times 2 is 64. Okay, so that right there is going to be 64. All right, so now we have 70 divided by 6 squared minus, and then the absolute value of negative 64 divided by 64. Okay, now we have our division. Negative 64 divided by 64 is negative 1. So this will be 70 divided by, then we have our bracket 6 squared minus the absolute value of negative 1. Okay, now we want to find the absolute value of negative 1, and that's just 1. So we're going to have 
70 divided by, we'll have these brackets, 6 squared minus the number 1. Okay, so now inside of our brackets here, we have 6 squared minus 1, so we have an exponent, we have subtraction. Got to do the exponent first, so 6 squared is done first. 6 squared is 6 times 6, that's 36. So you're going to end up with 70 divided by, and inside the brackets, 36 minus 1. 36 minus 1 is 35, so you'll have 70 divided by 35, and that's going to equal 2. Okay, so that's your final answer here. Okay, let's look at another one. Okay, for problem three, again, the objective is to evaluate. And here we have 30 minus 5 times 3 cubed minus, and then we have this quantity here, negative 15 minus the quantity 23 minus 14, and then minus 12. Okay, so again, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. Okay. All right, so do we have any parentheses? Yes, we do. Right, we have parentheses right here. And then we have an intercept right here. Okay, so we have an inner and outer set of parentheses. So again, once you get inside the parentheses, you're looking to reapply the order of operations. So you end up looking for another set of parentheses. And again, that's, that's what's inside of here. Okay, so that's why you start out with 23 minus 14 is your first thing that you do. So what's 23 minus 14? Well, 23 minus 13 is 10. So 23 minus 14 must be 9. Right? So we just replace this with a 9. So we'll have 30 minus 5 times 3 cubed minus, and then you have inside of parentheses here, negative 15 minus, we know that's going to be 9, close parentheses, minus 12. Okay, staying inside of the parentheses because that's the most important thing. You have negative 15 minus 9, and that's going to be negative 24. So we'll have 30 minus 5 times 3 cubed minus negative 24 minus 12. So there are no more parentheses. And so now what we want to do is look for exponents, right? Please excuse, excuse is the second thing that comes up, excuse the E stands for exponents. So we have an exponent here, 3 cubed, 3 cubed is 27, right? It's 3 times 3, which is 9, times 3 again, which is 27. So this will be 30 minus 5 times 27 minus negative 24, we know that's just plus 24, then minus 12. Okay, what's our next highest priority? We did, we did all our parentheses and we did all our grouping symbols, right? And then we did all the exponents. Next highest priority is multiplication division. And that's, you know, going left to right. So I don't see any division. I see multiplication here and that's it, right? So we we'll just do five times 27. So how do you do that quick? You do five times 20, that's 100. And you do five times seven, that's 35. You just add those two together, right? So that'd be 135. So you get 30 minus 135 plus 24 minus 12. Okay, now we just have addition and subtraction left. We can just go left to right. 30 minus 135 is going to be negative 105. Okay, next you have negative 105 plus 24. And I know that's going to be negative. Let's see, 105 minus 24, 5 minus 4 is 1, and then 10 minus 2 would be 8, so this would be negative 81. Okay, then we have minus 12, and so I know this is negative. 1 plus 2 is 3, 8 plus 1 is 9, so our final answer here is going to be negative 93. 